That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Old Man, uh, the eighth film directed by Lucky McKee, uh, being distributed courtesy of RLJE Films on October 14th, 2022. What do I know Lucky from? Well, his first film, May, is a favorite of mine, which I often reference and I know I've made you watch with Angela Bettis and Jeremy Sisto. Is that where she's putting together like a person from Body Parts? Yeah, if you can't find a friend, make one. Oh, yeah. wow. Uh, I also like his second film, The Woods, and You've Seen The Woman, which I think we re- reviewed the Arrow Video's Blu-ray release of that. So this is a very interesting filmmaker. Uh, I haven't watched anything he's done since 2013's All Cheerleaders Die, which he co- co-directed with Chris Sievertson, which I didn't like. Uh, so I, I was excited to see uh, Old Man come up on my radar, starring Stephen Lang, even though the premise and the trailer very much look like we're riffing on Stephen Lang as an old man in the house, you know, in, from, Again. from his Don't Breathe films. But Okay, major spoiler, because I have to tell the story, and it's going to be very basic. So Stephen Lang plays an old man living in like a cabin in the woods in like the Smoky Mountains. The Smoky Mountains, yeah, with bordering Tennessee and North Carolina. And he's not li- I mean, he's living like he's a person with mental health issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, one day, a younger man shows up at his door, a guy named Joe, played by... Uh, Mark Center... So Joe, Sentiner? so Joe shows up and Stephen Lang's character, the old man, is alarmed and like holds him at gunpoint for a while while this guy explains himself. And big spoiler, we find out that that young man is actually all in the old man's head and is actually the old man when he was younger. Mm-hmm. And we learn this because... Towards the end of the film, the this, last twenty minutes, this cloaked person called the Rascal shows up, and the old man is like, "Oh my God, some person was here." Blah blah blah, and the Rascal's like, "Man, you say this shit every time I leave. Like, you know, it's all in your head." And that's when we learn that how this old man came to live in this cabin in the woods is he killed his wife and fled, and then of course went crazy. And we know this because the Rascal gives. The old man, this like potion that's supposed to have like, it's from this this thing from a Cherokee legend, I think about the a purple lake where it can restore any of your health. So it's probably there. like a psychedelic. So in his so, but it's also a, in his head. So as as the audience, we see in his head that that's why he's there at the end. Yes, which seems I think is kind of a red herring to try to divert us from what I thought was kind of painfully obvious, uh, from the jump, but. Uh, well, so you started this film as I was leaving the house, and had I known that's what you were watching, I probably would have stayed. But as you were explaining the story to me, like very quickly, I thought, oh, he's I talking know. to himself. Yes. Okay. Did you like this film? I thought it was okay. I, I based I haven't seen again the past couple of films directed by Lucky McKee, but uh, I liked it well enough and I think Stephen you know for two actors to be almost alone together for an hour and 20 minutes of the running time it's pretty impressive to also for the most part keep your attention uh, and keep the tension going uh, and Stephen Lang it, it's I think he has more room to play with here than say the Don't Breathe films as this old coot uh, who for a good five minutes I'd say we wakes up and it, it, it starts and ends exactly on the same shot as him waking up discombobulated, looking for, shouting for someone named, well, I thought it was his dog at first name, Rascal, and come to find this is it's this other cloaked figure haunting his, his imagination. His caregiver. But not really. I don't think Rascal's real either. Oh. <laughs> I think that, I think all of that is in his head. Um, and and it, it's just interesting. And again, there are a lot of red herrings. There's this thing about this mountain lion that he had, that he'd killed when he'd first gotten lost in the woods himself that's, uh, on the wall and he's telling Joe who we come to learn is his younger self of course that he's like I, I, I killed this mountain lion and I never I've been here ever since it's like well somebody taxidermied that so I don't know exactly uh, but Stephen Lang is kind of funny you know he's wearing this red jumpsuit or these red long johns and he looks crazy and he's he seems to be having a lot of fun with it and before anything much of anything is revealed they're playing this dance of you know maybe he's going to hurt joe who's very ambiguous about how exactly he got lost which is also a major red flag early on in the film and um he's 
Stephen Lang starts to tell him this story about the last visitor he had, which was this fat, sweaty Bible salesman who he had nothing but disdain for and how he ended up tying him to the stove and torturing him because people are only truthful when they're scared. And um, talking about how he slipped him a Mickey, basically. Uh, I don't know. I, there, there's some fun to be had in that. But I think once once the rascal shows up and we realize that Joe was all in his mind, I think it loses a lot of steam. And then it's trying really hard to uh, keep it going to the finale. But, yeah. What else you got? That's about it. What would you give it? Oh, I, I, again, I thought also Stephen Lang was giving me... Um, I could see him in a, a Western. He was giving me like a, a Ben Johnson type or uh, even a Lee Marvin uh, as older gentlemen in Westerns. Um, and, and again, when he was being a little more mirthful, uh, maybe Cat Baloo-ish. Oh. Have you ever... If you've never seen Cat Blue with Jane Fonda and Lee Marvin, who won his Oscar for that, that's an act, that's a lot of fun. I think from '65 or something. But again, I, it wasn't was it what it wasn't what I was expecting, which isn't a bad thing. But I also think it could have been um, a little stronger. Um, and it's the first time Joel Veach, first time screenplay for a feature. And I don't know. It, I personally, I would have wanted some things cleaned up in the third act that could have made this a lot more interesting about being caught perpetually in this like Sisyphean cycle of trauma because that's what he is. He's waking up over and over again and having to relive, you know, murdering his wife after catching her committing adultery. Noted. What would you give this film? Two and a half. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>